At a press briefing today, PCG spokesman Commodore Jay Tariela spoke about China's forceful assault and how this has elevated tensions in disputed waters. Well, if we're going to look at how it bended the railing of uh, the Philippine Coast Guard vessel because of the water cannon, obviously that would be very fatal. The Chinese Coast Guard now has elevated the tension and the level of their aggression as well towards the Philippine Coast Guard vessel. This is the first time that um, we can say that the Coast Guard uh, vessel has been subjected to a direct water cannon with that kind of pressure that even resulted to structural damage of the Philippine Coast Guard. Joining us over the phone tonight to talk about this latest water cannon incident is Commodore Jay Tariela. He is the Philippine Coast Guard spokesperson for the West Philippine Sea. Commodore Tariela, good evening. I know it's been a busy day for you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hello, uh, good evening and um, also a pleasant evening for all your viewers. Uh, Commodore Terriel, before we get into the details, I wanted to know if you could help us set this into context. Do we know at this point how many times Philippine Coast Guard boats or ships or vessels have been water cannoned by China, either this year or in the past 12 months? Well, the last time that the Philippine Coast Guard was um, experienced water cannon was last August. But uh, it's different, no? Uh, the pressure of the water cannon that they used before is not the same as this that is, I consider to be fatal. Um, the last um, water cannon happened in August uh, during the resupply mission uh, that we escorted the Uniza May. But um, again, this, is, this kind of water cannon attack is completely different. There was also an incident in March, right? Uh, I think that was in the second Thomas Shoal, if I recall correctly. No. Um, during the water cannon in um, the second Thomas show, um, it's only the Uniza May that were um, subjected to water cannon attack. Okay. Hindi, not Philippine Coast Guard ships? Not the Philippine Coast Guard ships. Okay. Commodore Tariela, could you describe to us uh, how strong uh, 200 PSI water pressure is? How dangerous is that? And were they aiming specifically at uh, navigational systems, our equipment? Uh, were there certain targets of the water cannon? Well, uh, for me to describe how, um, how uh, fatal the pressure of the water cannon is that... Um, I think it's, uh, it, it's quite obvious for us to at least understand that this water cannon that hit the railing of the Philippine Coast Guard vessels were bended. Even the canopy behind the pantail of uh, the Philippine Coast Guard was also totally destroyed. So you can just imagine if this kind of um, pressure with so much uh, 200 PSI will hit uh, a person. No, it would definitely be fatal. So, it's a question whether are they targeting really a specific equipment of the Philippine Coast Guard and BFAR vessel? Well, we noted the fact that uh, when they uh, targeted the BFAR vessel, they are really aiming on the antennas of um, the BFAR vessel that supports um, communication equipment and also the navigation equipment of um, the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources. All right, uh, Commodore Tariela, taking it back to before this whole thing happened, knowing that Balikatan is happening somewhere there in the disputed waters, did the PCG and the Bureau of Fisheries expect some sort of leveling up in terms of harassment from China? Well, I don't see that uh, there is a connection with the, um, the Balikatan exercise and how China responded in this um, um, humanitarian mission that we're conducting in Bajo de Masindo. Uh, because we know for a fact that even before this Balikatan exercise, last March, uh, during the resupply mission in Ayungin Show, the Chinese Coast Guard have already started elevating tension by using more powerful water cannons. So I, I, I don't want to believe that it's because of the ongoing Balikatan exercise uh, that it is the reason why they choose um, also subject to Philippine Coast Guard to another water cannon attack. All right. And was there, has there been any, some sort of a tactical changes in the way that you conduct these uh, resupply and rotational missions? I think uh, some time ago, uh, there was uh, that talk of, you know, we must 
change our tack or change our strategy and how we conduct these because of the increasing tensions? Have we put this into execution? Well, the part of the Philippine Coast Guard, we are uh, still going to um, affect the damage um, done by the Chinese Coast Guard. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, Chinese, the Philippine Coast Guard vessel and the BFR vessel are on their way back to uh, Manila. And then from there, we're going to make a formal report, submit that to the National Task Force West Philippine Sea. And um, as to the changes of um, the operational approach or uh, tactical details, um, it will still be decided by the National Task Force. Uh, and uh, right now, we, that's something that we haven't discussed yet. Um, it, it has to be elevated to the National Task Force if ever there will be any change. Commodore, can you describe to us what are the trigger points over in this area in Bajo de Masinloc? Um, where do the Chinese or at what points do they uh, start uh, uh, turning on the water cannons because we know that over in Ayungin Shoal, ang sabi nila, pag may construction materials na daladala, mm -hmm. doon sila nag water cannon. Pero dito naman, sa Bajo de Masinloc, what are the trigger points for these kinds of incidents to happen? Well, um, thank you for a very interesting question. No? But um, let me um, highlight uh, first what, um, what were the red lines before during the time of uh, the previous administration. Uh, during the previous administration, um, the red line says that we're not supposed to go near at a distance of 12 nautical mile radius away from um, the Bajo de Masinlo. Uh, but uh, when President Bobo Marcos um, was elected and we already had the different um, national security advisor, Eduardo Año, being our uh, chairman for the National Task Force West Philippine Sea, we have um, cross that red line from 12 nautical mile more to 10, 8, 6, 5. And then right now, um, for the past few months since we started the rotational deployment, even before, the Coast Guard vessel and BFAR vessel can already come close to uh, Bajo de Masindo in less than 0.5 nautical mile more. Um, as a matter of fact, we, we, it's the place where we distribute the fuel subsidy and uh, water and other food back to our Filipino fishermen. Uh, that's how effective we were in um, challenging the red line of the Chinese uh, government. Mm -hmm. So to respond to your question, what is the red line now, now that the Chinese uh, government is elevating such level of um, aggression? Um, you know, when the Philippine Coast Guard um, in this particular incident was attacked by water cannon, we're only as close as 600 yards from Bajo de Masinlo. So, on the part of the uh, BFAR vessel, they were already um, 11 nautical miles away from Bajo de Masindo. Um, it means that uh, we, right now, we, we still don't figure out whether is this a random decision all at the same time. Because on our part, we were attacked around 9 o'clock, and then a few minutes after, uh, BFAR was already um, water cannon all at the same time, despite of the distance that we, we have from each other. So um, I think there is, uh, there is a unified um, command from where this China Coast Guard vessels took their, um, their uh, guidance or instruction to subject the, both the Coast Guard and BFAR to water cannon all at the same time. All right. Uh, what were the, sorry, you said there were a few red lines. What were the other ones? Well, those were the red lines. I mean, um, in Bajo de Masindo. That we're not going to cross the 12 nautical mile mark before. Just and that same mark. thing with the yeah, human okay. shore. Yeah. Mm. Okay, and just speaking of lines, uh, supposedly reports have it that they installed another floating area near the mouth of Bajo de Masinloc. Um, have we actually seen this? Anyone from the Philippine side? And also, what, what do we make of, of that? And uh, tying it into it being an actual red line when Philippine boats or fishing boats seem to want to enter the Bajo de Masinloc. Uh, the Philippine Coast Guard was able to uh, get a drone footage of uh, the barrier that they uh, placed there um, uh, yesterday. Um, through the use of drones, we were able to see the 380-meter uh, barrier. But it's also worth mentioning that uh, when we interviewed the Filipino fishermen, um, 
the only time that they um, place that border is every time that they uh, monitor the presence of the government vessels like Coast Guard and DFAR. Because even before we arrive there, while we are on our way, um, at a distance probably of um, 12 nautical miles, once they um, detected our presence, that's the time that they have um, placed the barrier. Mm -hmm. Now, if the question is, what did we do um, after um, we realized that there is a barrier? Well, uh, on the part of the Coast Guard and B4, um, obviously they have more uh, China Coast Guard vessels that are guarding the barrier. Uh, together with the Chinese maritime militia. Um, it's quite uh, difficult for us to uh, be able to come up with a plan on how to remove the bar just like before. Okay, so they, they actually lay it out when they know like Philippine boats are approaching and then they take it out and do it all over again when Philippine boats approach again. Is, is that how it works? Yes, um, Phil Philippine government vessels, mm -hmm. uh, not, the, not just the ordinary Philippine mm -hmm. officials. Speaking of uh, capability to monitor, uh, you also spoke about that uh, capacity to monitor the Chinese research vessels that was spotted off of Catanduanes in northern Samar. Uh, there's a report saying that there are actually four Chinese research vessels. Can you give us more details on that and what could they be doing exactly? Well, it's a Chinese research vessel uh, that departed the uh, Shenzhen port sometime mid-April, and then it crossed uh, the northern part of our territory between Basco and um, Itbayat Island. And then it went down to Catanduanes. It even came close to the territorial sea of uh, northern Samar, and then it went back again to Catanduanes. Right now, as we, we are monitoring that it's um, um, at the eastern Samar uh, seaboard, um, on the part of the Coast Guard and the Armed Force of the Philippines, we are strictly monitoring this. Actually, the Armed Force of the Philippines um, deploy their aircraft as well to closely monitor the presence of this um, research vessel. Hey, pero tama po ba na apat ang na-monitor natin? Isa lang. Isa lang. Ah, okay. Isa lang. Okay, and uh, is there any plan to, uh, you mentioned that we will be monitoring, this is of course in the eastern seaboard in the Pacific Ocean on the opposite side. Are there any plans to start uh, maybe doing some sort of patrols on that area as well? Yes, uh, we are closely coordinating uh, with the uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines and uh, of course the Philippine Coast Guard with the support of the Armed Forces. We intend to um, be able to deploy an asset uh, to intercept this uh, research vessel once it gets close to the um, territorial sea of the eastern seaboard. And then um, lastly, Commodore, if you'll allow me a very basic, simple question. Uh, some people are wondering, whenever these incidents happen, why do we never hit back? Uh, for instance, can we also deploy water cannons? Um, do we have that capability? Well, our Coast Guard vessels are um, um, capable to uh, use water cannons. But the, these water cannons are intended to do firefighting. This is actually part of our firefighting equipment um, for the purpose of maritime safety. Now, many people are asking, why can't we uh, make use of our water cannon to respond with a water cannon mm. attack being done by the Chinese Coast Guard towards the Philippine Coast Guard and the Bureau of Research and Aquatic Resources? Um, I know personally the sentiment of the Filipino people um, and also on the Philippine poster, we also share the same sentiment, probably even more. But um, the guidance of the president is very clear. We're not going to uh, be, uh, you know, provoke. We're still going to deal with them, deal with them professionally. Uh, we're not going to be the reason of escalation. So no matter how unprofessional, how bully. Uh, they are, we still choose to um, do the right thing in maintaining our presence in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, your choice of verb is interesting, provoke. Uh, could we also not, because does this not also classify as defense? Uh, you know, we, of course, we will not hit them first, but if they hit the boats, uh, again, could we not hit back? Well, the point here is that if ever we're going to use the water cannon, with the bigger Chinese Coast Guard vessels that they have, with the smaller vessels that they have, what is the strategic relevance of a smaller vessel 
using water cannon against two China Coast Guard vessels mm. who are bigger than you. Mm. Yeah, prudence is uh, the better part of value. Commander, uh, the president did mention that uh, if somebody dies, a Filipino soldier, Filipino service person, then we can invoke the mutual defense treaty. Is that a specific guideline that he has passed down uh, to your level, uh, to you, you guys on the ground? Yes, uh, actually, that was the response of the president during the up conference when he was asked, uh, what will um, happen if somebody dies among the Coast Guard or the Armed Forces of the Philippines? And uh, he mentioned that it would definitely trigger the mutual defense treaty. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to leave that there for now. Thank you so much again for joining us tonight. Uh, PCG spokesperson for the West Philippine Sea, Commodore Jay Tarielia. We appreciate your time.